One man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him, Ya Rasulullah, Allimni Surat Yusuf, Allimni Surat, surat Hud. Say, Teach me Surat Yusuf. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ma ablag indallahi min al mu'awwidatain. There is no two surahs that are more powerful and beneficial to you with Allah than saying the two final surahs of the Quran. The two surahs of refuge. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ So this man, he was jumping the gun. He wants to become a scholar. And the Prophet ﷺ can see this man needs to work on his spirituality. He needs to assess. We need to all ask ourselves in this room, how often do we say these? Because if we look in the narrations, the Prophet ﷺ said these two surahs at least 20 or 30 times a day. At least. That's the sunnah. We were told to follow his model. The Prophet ﷺ taught people to use these two surahs whenever you are finishing your salah. Dubur kulli salah. After you finish your salah, there is various recitations of remembrance and prayers for blessing. And then he would read these surahs. And the Prophet ﷺ used to read them three times in the morning and three times in the night. And the Prophet ﷺ, he taught people to recite them anytime you feel. The same companion came to him. And he asked him, tell me something. He said, there is no better way to seek refuge for one who is seeking refuge than the final two surahs of the Quran. Again, is this for someone who does not know what it means or someone who's not paying attention to what they're saying? Or is this the meaning in the prayer that you are making as a conscious believer between you and God? That's the point. Because Islam is about a conscious soul turning to its Lord by its own choice and knowingly asking of Him and knowingly seeking His forgiveness and His guidance. That's the way of Islam. Some people took it like if I just say things in Arabic, I don't know what I'm saying and it's going to magically help me. That's not a true prayer. You don't even know what you're saying. How could it mean anything from you? As an ummah, we are struggling. We have to repair our mindset. It's something that takes reflection, which the Qur'an says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not re re reflect and ponder and think deeply over the Qur'an or are their hearts locked off from it? Are they just going along? Is Islam something you inherited from your family as an ethnic tradition? Or is Islam a fundamental natural reality of the soul, body and mind and the earth and everything in it to do the will of God? And so we have to choose by knowledge and understanding to commit to Him. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he taught people to regularly recite these two surahs at the end of the Qur'an for that. Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyyah, in his masterpiece on spirituality, he said, Believers need of a deep, reflective, regular recitation of the Mu'awwidatan, the two surahs of refuge, is more than their need to breathe, eat, drink or sleep because of how much influence evil is in the world and always will be until the day of judgment comes. It's always going to be there. The reason why these are the conclusion of the Qur'an. So last two surahs. He could have concluded the Qur'an with anything. He could have concluded to the Qur'an and be good and pray a lot and be good Muslims. But he didn't. He said, don't just take the Qur'an as an affirmation of your good beliefs in the field, good, warm and fuzzies. Take it as a manual for refugees. That we are going away from this world and our selfish attachment to it. And we are seeking refuge in the heavenly truth that brought us into existence. And we want to be in that refuge when our time comes so that we are worthy of being in an eternal place where there is no danger and no harm and no evil.